Flasche Ongeröl. I'm keeping that in, I hope you know. Let on bargain, sure. Uh, fuck it. We'll see how it goes. What's power? Alright. So, hello! Another live video review. First one in... A while. It's a live review for a live show, so it can't. Yeah. Um... I want to say since last May? It must be quite a while, yeah. But I think Panda was the last one we did, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a while. No, the last one I did, the last one we did was Carrie. Yeah, true. Which was July, I believe. June, July, something like that. Yeah, the first week of July, I think it was. Or the second week. You're on that somewhere. Because I'm pretty sure it was like week either before or after Hyper. It was July. Because that's what, when all the shit went down that I'm not going to go into right now. <laughs> all I need to say, all I'm going to say on that is there's a reason one of the reviews is a Patreon exclusive. And it isn't due to copyright claims for once. Yeah. Goddamn copyright. Anyway, so yes, um, we saw tonight. Three bands. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, but the headliner was Devin Townsend. Ed has been furiously masturbating for the last few hours. So. <laughs> I will get you in a headlock if you're not careful. That's not. Mm? That's not. As I said, if you're not careful. But yeah, um... So, uh, where to begin? Um, yeah, we, we got back about hour and a half. Yeah, probably about an hour and a half yeah. ago. So. Yeah, hour and a half ago. Um, we've been talking over stuff. And this is one of the more difficult reviews to do for a few reasons. Probably because I can't really remember the first two bands that well. Yeah, um, so <laughs> the first band, uh, I might as well go straight into it because we've only got one bar of power left waiting for this thing to charge was a pain in the ass. Yeah. And yeah, we've still got one bar. Um, yeah, the first band, Leprous, they were okay. They were... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were trying to describe them, actually. I... They, they left no impression on me. <laughs> I was very bored during their set. They were well, competent. Yeah, they competent. I felt myself kind of just popping along a little bit, but... I don't remember anything from it. Nah. <laughs> so, they were just one of those bands, I guess, that exists, and that's probably the most notable thing I can think of, having seen them live. I mean, anyone who's watched my reviews previously knows that if I say a band is competent but not much else it's probably one of the more damning statements that I can make. I guess if there's nothing wrong with them and if someone likes them then that's fair but personally I'm probably not gonna really pay much attention to them at this stage. Yeah. Um, yeah there was really nothing of note. <laughs> Reviewing them is pointless because it's sort of like, do you remember anything? No. Yeah. <laughs> I remember them not being bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I, I, I remember not throwing up, so that's an upside of... <laughs> Thumbs up! You didn't make me throw up! <laughs> um, the second band, Tesseract. Oh... <sighs> Again, competent, but here's the massive problem with their music. At least their older music, which they were playing a lot of, 
one of our friends uh, summed it up quite aptly that they were using far too many sounds in individual songs for you to actually be able to get into the music. I followed that up with saying that it sounded like one of those sampler CDs that you used to get in the 90s, where it's sort of like you get 30 seconds of a song, and that would be it about it. It sound kind of like a crossfade for a whole album for a song. <laughs> yeah. And it was just really frustrating because it was sort of like, I started to get into it, and then it's sort of like, hang on. Uh, I think it must be the case of the older stuff, because I'm pretty sure I checked them out a while ago on YouTube or whatever, and they seemed pretty alright then. Yeah, same. But I think that was mostly stuff on the third album. Yeah. Which is currently the newest, because the fourth one hasn't finished yet. They mm. mentioned that. Hopefully the fourth album will be more like the third, because the third song the third album seemed pretty enjoyable. I think they played one song from it that I'm aware of, because he mentioned it at the end. Yeah. No, the, he played one song from the fourth album, I think. Maybe I'm, uh, I'm not. I don't know much about Tesseract personally. Yeah, I only know of Tesseract because of someone else introducing me to them. They seemed okay, but really enough, I've seen them mentioned quite often when people talk about Periphery. I don't quite know why, because they're not even that similar. Yeah, like, some people would seem to like one thing to like the other one a lot. Yeah, personally, I'm more of a Periphery. Same. <laughs> I, I I will say it. it Given the choice, I will go for Periphery every time, because Periphery actually sounds like there's a structure to follow, and I'm, I'm not going, wait, wh <laughs> which song were we at? You've also considering the just like difficulties growing in me a lot since we reviewed it. Mm. I, I haven't re-listened to it recently. I do recommend it, because other than like maybe two songs, I actually really like all of it now. Fair I days. also got Juggernaut Alpha and Juggernaut Omega, which are pretty great as well. Mm. So. And oh uh, shit! We're in love, Let's keep yeah. let's go. go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll do reviews. Woo. <laughs> I think I will edit this out, this bit out, and we'll basically go. Okay, we ran out of power. We had to recharge quickly. Yeah. Okay, so I think I think we can do this in half hour bouts. Yeah. Okay, so. Back in what will seem imperceptible seconds to you. I thought we may have a weird transition like George Lucas shitting it out of the bed or whatever. You know, but... <laughs> but yeah, one, once we come back we'll actually be discussing the meat and potatoes of the review. Which I'll be fangasming over. Oh, I said earlier, I wasn't wrong. We will be back momentarily. Technical difficulties. And we're back. Not that you'll really be able to tell how long we were gone. Yeah. As far as you know, it's been three weeks. <laughs> you really think it would take that long for us to get this finished? It's Far Future 2007, I suppose. Is that a Far Cry Blood Dragon reference? Yes, yes it was. <laughs> You can tell it's late, I would have picked up on that sooner. Herman decided to move. He's an Edmund Smasher. Don't listen to him, Herman. Um, okay, so yes, on to the main event. Um, Kevin Townsend. <laughs> oh mum. Yeah, so so we're we're at two now. First there was the mistaking one of his songs from Transcendence for a cover of Let It Go. Oh yeah, I feel about that. And now we're at her almost calling him Kevin Townsend. <laughs> uh so yeah, uh, a few things before we get into the main matter. Um, first off, uh, this was a problem pervading the entire c concert, unfortunately. Hammersmith Apollo, 
You need to sort your shit out. Your acoustics kinda suck. Yeah, the weird thing is, is that, yeah, when I went to see Perfume a couple of years back, it sounded all right. But in that case, I was upstairs at the back stalls. We were here, we were downstairs in the standing area, kind of close to the front. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether it's the case of certain parts of the room are not as good as others, which is quite common with venues. Yeah, unfortunately, where it, when it comes to metal, you're going to have people trying to get to the front like mad. So Hammersmith Apollo, sort your sound system out. It's not the worst we've had though. I've been in some pretty terrible venues over the years. Fair dues. But it's also nowhere near the best here. Yeah. To be fair, the main venues I've been to that have had worse sound systems have been pubs. Well, yeah. So yeah. they kind of have an excuse. Because it isn't their main focus. Oh, well, that's which actually is a designated venue. Yeah. Um, I mean, that said, one of the one of the best venues that I ever went to was the Peel. Um, unfortunately, that closed down. Like every other venue in London, it seems. Yeah. We're running out of the venues this morning. Yeah. But th this was sort of like my my usual haunt before uni, and it was sort of like I was determined to be there on the last night because it's sort of like. I love this place. Yeah. Well, that place got me through sort of my pre uni days, so I was sort of like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to be there on the final night. Mm. I, I, I started doing, I did a bit of stand up there. First time I ever did stand up. It was there. I sucked. <laughs> but there you go, Mr. Yeah. I'd probably be a lot better now because. I have a lot less of a giving a shit about anything attitude. I developed snick comics. Hmm. Snick snick comics. Yeah. But anyway, um, the other thing, and this is a message to a lot. I, I I'm going to come close to the camera for this. This is a message to a lot of metalheads, particularly new ones. This, this was a problem pervading all of Devin's set, and it's a major problem because, well, I was going to say, if you don't know Ocean Machine, and you're not intending to go to a live set of Devin's within the next couple of weeks, go, pause this video, go listen to Ocean Machine from start to finish, and then you'll understand where I'm coming from with this following message. But I'm going to come close to the camera for this. New metalheads. All metalheads. You don't always need to mosh. Let me repeat that. You don't always need to mosh. Does it repeat? Does it need repeating a third time? Yes. You don't need to always mosh. I realise I'm checking the viewfinder as I'm doing this, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, the, the thing about Ocean Machine, if you don't know it, I'll, ju I'll just put it as simply as this, the songs on Ocean Machine are not the sort that you mosh to, they're very much a, you, you know, you, at most you'll headbang, that's generally the most, maybe for night, possibly do a bit of moshing, but that's really pushing it. For most of the tracks, it's headbanging at most. And for the majority, I, I say most of the tr tracks, it's headbanging at most. I'm meaning that's at most. For most of the tracks, you sit and just let the music 
flow over you. You say that's a reasonable step? Yeah, what is it? it it's, it's the sort of the album that you just need to experience. You, you need... It's... The music from the album is better engaged when you're not active. Especially some of my favourite tracks from the album, which will... Well, I, I have discussed at various points what my favourite tracks are, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Well, so I think, since we're on the topic of people being annoying, if, you know, someone is performing a song live and it's pretty much just acoustic guitar and singing and nothing else, please don't fucking talk over the whole thing. Mm. So one guy behind me that would not shut the fuck up about the whole goddamn concert. Ugh. Really annoying. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, in particular, the, I was really annoyed when people started moshing to this particular song. Um, I feel like, I always feel a bit awkward about saying when my favourite songs are swear words, because it's sort of like, but that's not really why it's my favourite song. It, I can not hear a song. Bastard! <laughs> I'd throw it out there. He's not wrong. Yeah. It is one of my favourite songs, and it is not a moshing song. They're a heavy bit, but these are... impactful. They are the sort of... You feel the music. You feel... The frustration and anger and kind of the disaffected attitude of Devin. I, I mean, I don't know his familial life, maybe that influenced the song a bit, so I, I may be a mega fan, but I it would feel a bit weird if I actually knew about stuff like that. Yeah, just giving his deepest, darkest caresses of his childhood front. Yeah. I mean, I know he's got a good relationship with his parents because he thanked them during his yeah. um, Live at the Albert Hall show, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there weren't other issues. I mean, how Canada's like 30 years behind. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. There's so many aspects of it that are like 30 years behind. So in 10 years time, they'll finally have Ocean Machine revealed. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in, in some aspects it's, it's, they are a bit behind, so maybe there was a bit of stigma about him being illegitimate, I, don't, I wouldn't Possibly, like to yeah. say. Um, I mean, he is in his 40s, so back then... True. I mean, e even in the 70s, if you were an illegitimate child, is going to have throw a bit of shade on you, so, I don't know, maybe it's just, I don't know, just the concept of being dispossessed. Probably, it's something I would not be surprised for Devin to make a song out of. Yeah. So, um, what you interesting about this gig is, well, as we mentioned just a minute ago, he played the entirety of Ocean Machine in full. Mm. Interesting enough, Ocean Machine is one of the only two albums of his I've never actually heard. So I was thinking, I could listen to it before the concert, or I could just experience it first hand live, yeah. and it was pretty great. Meanwhile, the direct contrast is it's one of my favourite albums <laughs> of his. This and Deconstruction. Deconstruction is my favourite of the all but one that I've never totally had. Because mm. Epic Loud the only other one I haven't. Yeah. You've heard songs from it because you've heard Lucky Animals. Yeah, I've heard stuff from it, but I haven't actually heard the album in full. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, atmosphere was pretty good. Pretty alright, yeah, other than the muddy sound. But yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah I, I, think we did notice that we did move back a, a few rows, like part way through, and did sound. Just at least notably better. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether just being further back may have been enough. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with how they've got the venue shaped and 
How the speakers system They remind me a lot of the kind of speakers that are often used at festivals, which yeah. is kind of weird because you know, it's generally used for large areas, whilst the Hermosa Apollo is not a particularly big venue. Yeah. Then there were these Hermosa houses and it's not necessarily that suited to that venue. Or maybe it's just a case of it's the venue not suited to metal. Mm. There's a lot I went there as perfume, and perfume is most definitely not metal. Yeah. I mean, we'll find out if there's a distinct difference when we see Lindsay Sterling. Because you're seeing her in a couple of weeks. And is it that many... soon? Fourth April. Oh, Jesus. April, second. It's a very early April, anyway. You've got the tickets, so oh, you'll yeah. be able to... We're just the fourth. But, yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it better not be on a Saturday, otherwise that's going to be a pain in the ass. I us. don't think it is. Oh, thank fuck I for that. I'll have to check in a minute. Yeah. It better not be, otherwise that'll be a case of, okay, do wrestling training, then Lindsay Sterling. <laughs> Maybe a good combination. <laughs> I'll be sort of like talking to my trainer, and it's sort of like, yeah, after this I'm going to see an electronic violin backed by dubstep. <laughs> I mean, occasionally. Dubstep isn't in every song. I don't know, but... Well, okay, electronic violin backed by electronica. Electronica violin, I guess. Hmm. Whatever. We, you know, we're not only here to discuss the semantics and genre implications of Lindy Sterling. No. That's what I did a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. I'll basically be, next review, well, I'll say what the next review will be, but yeah. After that, presumably we'll be doing a review of that concert as well. Yeah. Well, might as well. Yeah, there's no reason not to. If we can rope another person into it, that'd be great. Yeah. Although, I'd probably a bit weird, so, like, you're coming home with us! <laughs> what? I don't even know you! <laughs> Too bad! There yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to Devon. Yeah. I'm doing that's where we're kind of here for. Yeah. Um, where we're here for? I don't know, I'm gonna uh, die. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was definitely an amazing experience to hear all of Ocean Machine, you know, front to back. It's weird because it seems to be a much more common thing these days. So just, I didn't really notice like full album playthroughs for a long time. The only thing I can think of is the Cure's trilogy, and that was like what, ten years ago, more than that. The only t other time that I've been to a full album playthrough was one of Devin's. Oh, yeah, Devin's is four. Special, whatever they're called. Uh, there's a special weird name before I got what it was. Yeah. Um, Did they have like a specific four concept album kind of thing? Uh, well, the Devon Townsend project was originally meant to be those four albums. That's right. Um, they kind of carried on. Yeah. Because it was originally just meant to be Key, Addicted, Deconstruction, and Ghost. Mm. And then we got. Epic Cloud and Sky Blue and <laughs> Transcendence. It does keep happening, yeah. But it seems to be a much more common thing because I know the Catatonia were doing it with a great called Distance recently, which mm. I unfortunately missed. Yeah. Uh, the Court of Luna show I saw last year was somewhere on the highway in full for 10th anniversary. Yeah. And Demos Always Soul were doing 10th anniversary of their first full albums later this year, which I may actually go to. Because I rather enjoy them. And uh, last time I saw them, actually, was supporting Cut Luna when I first saw them in 2008. Fair it is. So, I also might... they have the original vocalist back yeah. in. I might join you for that, just to... It's a pretty hard stuff. I mean, the one song you heard was from the n newest album. There's two albums after the last one. Mm. And also not what I would call necessarily indicative of their style. It's yeah. it's kind of one of those that stands out for being quite a bit different. So, Fair you might like them, I might not. I don't know. Yeah. You'll have to play me more of their stuff. Yeah. It's only got a kind of metalcore elements to it. Mm. Metalcore, I always find myself a bit... So do I, but yeah. they're one of the ones that stand out to me as being decent. Mm. But anyway, um, back to subject. <laughs> God. But it's a case of, you know, once again, doing full album tours seems to be a more common thing in days, which frankly I'm okay with. Yeah. Then you get to hear some songs that maybe you wouldn't hear otherwise. Like the fact that the Cure Seventy Walker series has only ever been played like on the tour release and on the trilogy, and there's never been played since. Yeah. So it's my favorite song of all time. It's really bad. Yeah. I mean, this is the only time they've ever he's ever played um, Ocean Machine in its entirety. You did so. mention that, actually, yeah. 
I'm sorry. This is the first time we've ever done it in full. Yeah. I know, it, I mean, <laughs> I think the very first time he played Death of Music was at the Albert Hall, mm. which was one of the... Well, all I'll say is, if you have, if you're to listen to Death of Music on its own, listen to the Albert Hall version because that is one of the most amazing experiences I have ever had musically, and that is that is one of those. This is not me talking in hyperbole. That is me going, well, seeing Alice Cooper live. His set was amazing. That was one of the best sets I've ever seen. But Death of Music was one of the best experiences musically I've ever had. And we're getting short battery. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, Can we just wrap up? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we'll just wrap up. So, um... Also, actually, worth noting before we do disappear, that after Ocean Machine, he did play a few songs from Transcendence, which yeah. we don't expect because it is technically a Transcendence tour. Yeah, he did, um... Was it... Failure... Failure... Higher... Higher... And Storm Burning, wasn't it? Yes. Not in that order, it was just... Well, it's Failure, Storm Burning, then Higher. Yeah. Yeah, it was Failure, Storm Binding, Higher. And... Higher's a good song known, definitely. Yeah. I, I think... I was worried that he was going to use the... Cover from failing from celebration. transcendence, yeah, transdermal celebration. celebration, which I've always been very tepid on. But then again, playing a cover for one of the three songs seems a bit weird. So. Yeah, I didn't even play failure because you know being the first like single they released. Yeah, ends up being personally a favorite song on the album. I'm happy with that. Mm. So it's one of my favorites on the album as well. So I was sort of like, yeah, yep, that's good for me. Yeah, yeah, we finish with. It's sort of like, we've just done my favourite album of yours, and we're finishing on fav favourite, favourite songs from New your album. last album, so... Well, it's like having Somewhere on the Highway from Cop Luna, my favourite album by them, and then having Waiting for You from Salvation as one of the songs before that, and I was like, yes, this is my favourite Cop Luna song. It's been played right before my favourite album in full. I mean, basically, the only way that they could make me feel any better as a end end would be to do um, Universal Flame as the closer. I would have been pretty damn happy if they played Samaria, because everybody wants to see Samaria alive, don't like that song. Well, maybe if you'd come to the Deconstruction yeah, live I'd, I'd show... I'd barely even if you were doing Tenzin Wars at that time. So. <laughs> ah, no, I'm just... But Samaria, Deadhead, Pixelate, that would be decent stuff yeah. that I'd like to hear, but yeah. I probably, possibly never will. <laughs> Well, he did do Deadhead as one of the Albert Hall. Nah, no, that sounds cool. I really like that song. <laughs> hey. Camera ran out of power completely this time. Um, but fortunately, we're just doing the wrap up, and hopefully, the battery power will actually last us that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tempt it. And we're a bit off center. I just. Because of how running out of power changes the angle, but... Well, yeah. it's having to plug it in, isn't it? Yeah. Should I make a joke about quantum mechanics? Shh. Shh. <laughs> 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 if you just detect a musical or something, it's just run away. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, just on the matter of Ocean Machine, I actually I remembered something. Um, it actually feels kind of appropriate doing an anniversary <laughs> uh, performance of it because if you actually listen to the various lyrics of the album and all that sort of thing, it's kind of going through just analysing life and the experiences of it and even sort of putting a positive spin on death. Yeah, probably well. Well, if, if you think yeah. life, that is actually all about death. Yeah. And funeral. My God. <laughs> 
That was the song right before Bastard. Yeah. I remember them hearing it in the lyrics. So. Yeah. But yeah, those they he actually puts a positive light on death. It's more probable. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just it's interesting to see that done, and it's not in a um, My Chemical Romance style, which. <laughs> As you should, why I will dip your head in a bucket of life. <laughs> I don't hate him. I just hate his music. With the exception of his solo album. Okay, I don't hate him. I just hate My Chemical Romance and everything that he has ever done with them. Anyway. Calm. Hmm? Calm down. I'm calm. Is this the commercial? Hmm? My commercial? <laughs> My commercial romance? I don't know. Um, anyway, um, listen to Devin Townsend. I'm just putting into a hypnotone now. I might do that. <laughs> or maybe I won't. You won't know! until it happens. Nah, I'm just kidding with you. Well, presumably they'll find out when they watch the video. <laughs> or will they? Because your discussion kind of irrelevant. <laughs> or does it? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, um... Uh, Ocean Machine is a very... It's actually interesting to consider how it's go discussing aspects of life and death and all that sort of thing, considering it was the first solo album after he left Strapping Young Lad, or... I think he might have been still been with Strapping Young Lad when he did it. I've been inclined to say yes. I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he even moved my shoulder, he just decided to jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little fuzzball. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't like to say for certain, I'd need to look that up, but I'm pretty sure he was still technically, well, I, I say with, he was, the, he was the showrunner with Strapping Young Lad. But, whatever. Um... It's not like with Mike Patton joining Faith No More and then it becomes his thing. Which is very weird to consider. But anyway. Well, very weird because it's like Mike Patton in general. True. <laughs> Mr. Bungle, anyone? Oh boy. Have you ever listened to any Mr. Bungle? Occasionally here and there. Uh, it was a sudden experience. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. Um, yeah. Obviously, I'm always going to come out in favour of Devon Towns and. Um, hmm? No, really. <laughs> anyway, but definitely, if you get the chance to go see him. Check him out. I mean, even if he's just doing an acoustic set, his acoustic sets are spot on. I mean, the interplay he'll have with his audience is... is he, he's a very... He is a very funny guy. He's got a very good comedic talent. So, yeah, he didn't really say that much tonight, but when he did, it, it, it was good. <laughs> yeah. So... Maybe he's just trying to play through the whole emotion machine. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I've been playing like 216 tours in the last like month or so, so I why did you hold to make me remember it? Mm. So one thing came out at one point. Yeah. Something like that. Oh, red light again. Okay, We're so going. wrap up. Check him out any opportunity you get. Um, next review 
we will be reviewing the new Steel Panther album, and after that, we will be back with a live review of Lindsay Sterling. Anything else to say? Don't think so. I seem to cover everything. We need to rush away for the camera corner of self destructs. So. Right, we will catch you again on the next Once More With Feeling. Bye. <laughs>